Well, let's bring in now Andrew Smith, Senior Lecturer in Contemporary History and Politics at Chichester University. Thank you very much for being with us on France 24 this morning. Now, Macron has himself admitted that he uh, can appear aloof, arrogant even. Is that something you think that voters have come to terms with or is he going to be grappling with that over the next 13 days before, before the, uh, the second round, do you think? I think it's a good question. Um, of course, Emmanuel Macron delayed entering the campaign um, for so long. You know, um, he was essentially campaigning from the Elysee Palace. Now, I think that has uh, cost him some of the momentum, um, and also allowed somebody like Marine Le Pen on the far right um, to have this slightly muted campaign, uh, which actually has sort of removed a lot of the scrutiny which we might expect from her. Um, I think it's going to be very challenging for Emmanuel Macron. I think now he is going to have to renew his offer uh, to strengthen that left leg uh, that we know he wants to, uh, to stand on. Because, you know, people are talking about the fact that he doesn't really have a natural reserve of votes on which he can draw. We've seen people like uh, Anne Hidalgo and Valérie Pécresse and even Yannick Jadot say that they would uh, endorse Macron in the second round. But the difficulty is, one of the stories of, uh, of last night is really that their parties have collapsed in some ways. They have so few votes to transfer that there is no automatic uh, assumption uh, for, for Emmanuel Macron. So I think you're right. This idea of his aloofness is something that will very much count against him. There is a real need to engage, to, to be seen, to campaign. And one can only hope, really, that this is a, a second round which will enliven the debate and in which the actual issues will come to the fore more than they did in the first round, which I think was marred by you know, really quite negative campaigning at times and, in all honesty, not a very inspiring message from many of the, uh, many of the candidates. And how likely is it, do you think, that over the course of the next 13 days that Macron can really, uh, you know, put a rocket up his campaign? How likely are we to see something different coming from the Elysee Palace? We always heard this was, you know, almost the fight that Macron was kind of holding back for. Um, we saw him on sort of back to his 2017 self when he gave his big La Défense rally. Um, and he spoke, you know, very, um, very broadly and very passionately and engagingly about a range of issues. But it didn't really capture the imagination. It didn't enliven French people and rally them massively to his cause. Now, he has slightly increased um, his, his vote share um, from uh, his 2017. Um, but that's really, really been at the expense of the, the collapse from uh, the, the, the Parti Socialiste and Les Républicains. Now, I think there's a, a, an important element where something has to happen in terms of some big social offer, something that makes this more than simply the cordon sanitaire or the Republican front or, you know, saying to people, don't vote for uh, Marine Le Pen, vote for someone else. Because that's the kind of thing I think will drive abstentions. Abstention in the first round was uh, less than uh, many of us feared. Um, I think that's a, a positive message. The idea really has to be for those who are me, me and don't want either uh, Macron or Le Pen What's going to happen in that second round? And there's a lot of people who are going to be in that camp. And I think that is really some of the people that uh, Macron has to speak to. Those are the people that Marine Le Pen wants to, to bring out. You know, she wants to, she always talks about the people that don't vote and how they could change elections. That's never usually a, a great thing to rely on. But I think for Macron, he has to kind of enliven and get people back out to feel that his project is something new. Already in his acceptance speech, he's talking about alternatives. This has been a campaign when people are talking about alternatives constantly. Now we have the incumbent president talking about alternatives. There's something definitely that needs to happen. I think you're right. It might well be that there is some kind of bigger offer, but these two weeks of scrutiny will be important. Um, one, because the hope is that they will draw greater uh, scrutiny of Marine Le Pen, or, you know, real reliance on Russian finance or, you know, quite extreme policies on immigration and a lot of the kind of quite scary constitutional policies um, that are there in her in her platform. We haven't heard much about those. Instead, it's been nice uh, Marine Le Pen with her caps and her purchasing power worries and all the rest of it. These two weeks, I think, will be crucial for finding out just how far right uh, Marine Le Pen is as a candidate. And Macron has to do more than that, however. He has to make that offer um, to try and enliven people to do more than just vote against Le Pen, but instead for some kind of vision that he has yet really to put forward in a meaningful sense. Andrew Smith, thank you very much. And do stay with us. We are going to be coming back to you at numerous points over the course of uh, the next hour.